Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're going to look at the isotherms in a PV diagram using the Van der Waals equation. Now before we show you the diagram, we want to express the equation in a slightly different form to get more of a feel for it. Keep in mind that pressure, volume, and temperature can all vary, and that also means that A divided by V squared is actually a variable quantity, and B as a percentage of the volume is also going to be a variable quantity because if you look at the quantity V minus B, B becomes important when V becomes very small and insignificant when V is very large. So all of those play a role which makes it very difficult to really understand how the Van der Waals equation actually works and how it effectively changes things when we're dealing with gases. So if we take the Van der Waals equation and multiply both sides by V squared, and rearrange the terms, multiply everything out and rearrange the terms, we can actually express the equation as a function of V. So we have the VQ term, V squared, V to the first power, and just a constant. And then notice these are the coefficients of V cubed, V squared, V, and then the constant by itself. Now, if we plug in some values at STP conditions, standard temperature and pressure, we can see that when we plug in these various values, 22.4 cubic meters for a kilojoule. This is the constant R in terms of kilojoules. And then the temperature, 273 Kelvin at STP conditions and so forth. Notice how the equation comes out quite nicely. We can see here that these numbers are virtually the same. There's a slight Randolph error, of course. But you can see that these two terms become insignificant and that these two terms are equal to one another with a negative sign, which essentially sets it equal to zero, so the equation appears to be satisfied. If we then rewrite the equation where we have the v, the v, the v to the third power, v squared, v and the constant term, again, notice that the coefficients really do depend on all these, ver all these various values for the pressure, volume, temperature, A and B relative to the pressure and the volume. So what we're going to do the next is we're going to draw a PV diagram with the various isotherms to see how the Van der Waals equation really changes that, that graph compared to the, what the graph will look like when we use the ideal equation. And again, this is why that's so, and it's very difficult sometimes to see how things change because there's so many variables in the equation even in the coefficients of V that makes it hard to visualize it. But a picture is worth a thousand words. On the next video, we'll show you what it looks like in a graphical representation. And that's how we try to get our hands around that Van der Waals equation.